And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Earl Farrell for Memphis. And with me is the smiling Denise Dubois Taylor. Hello. Welcome, welcome back to the show. I'm glad to be back already. Yeah, no, it's uh, well, it was a week ago. I know. Have you missed me? I have. That's why I said come <laughs> back. And I had so many people say that uh, have her back. She's Thank she's you. good. I said, well, she she's a professional. Thank <laughs> you. Just, but, uh, yeah, I got a lot of great comments on it, and, and I thoroughly enjoyed, enjoyed doing the show. I had a great time. It was fun. Old and, times. And so I said, well, look, next time you go to lunch someplace, let me know where you're going and uh, take some pictures and come back. And so you went to uh, Paulette's. To Paulette's. And, and in a second, we'll, we've got she took some pictures, and we'll talk about her, her thing there. And today you had another outing. I did. Um, I tried something I'd never tried before called the Moon Dance Grill in Germantown near Settle Creek. I've been to the bar a couple of times. They have a great bar there. It looked like it. I didn't sit there. But here's the interesting thing. Here's the hot update. I was supposed to have lunch with a friend at Coastal, which has been, especially during the pandemic, it was like my go-to place, great outdoor patio. They, I had reservations. They called yesterday and said, oh, we're so sorry, but our manager has decided we're not serving lunches during the week anymore. Wow. We would be happy to schedule you for this evening. I'm saying, well, no, I'm coming for lunch. Actually, I have lunch. Yes. I'm going to have it someplace. I do that first. <laughs> I'll call you later about supper. So that is, I was very sorry to hear that because I love that place for lunch. But now I, I think they do have brunch and lunch on weekends. But for the first part of the week, most of the week, it's supper or late afternoon only. So that's the latest. Four thirty or something. They're open. Yeah, like four or four thirty. And, and if you want to get in, you have to take go to. The, it's like the early bird special uh, that Kathy's grandparents used <laughs> yes. to go to. We're meeting my grandparents. What time's dinner? It's because usually like seven o'clock when we four thirty. What are we going to do the rest of the night? <laughs> Go back for dessert. Yeah. So I, I did go to Moon Dance Grill instead. Never been there. It's on um, South Germantown Road near Neshoba. Yeah. And What's it was it? good. So yeah. I recommend it. It's uh, Tommy Peters owns that. Who, oh, I know him. He also has BB King's. Downtown, yeah. right. And yeah. uh, at a, at a Bina, Bina's. upstairs from yeah. there. And he Which has, is great. He also has the... It's what's it called the, the not the columns but the colonnades. Uh, it's that venue oh, downtown used to be a bank has the yeah, big columns. Yeah, and, I didn't and, know that. And he rents that out. That's a um, a uh, uh, venue for weddings and all kinds of stuff. Gus Pasquale down in uh, Australia says uh, Memphis Cool Crew. That's what he's now dubbed us. Oh, as I them. like that. Which I, the other day I came up with it when we were talking. I said, that's Memphis Cool. And I told Olson, Ron Olson about it. I said, you're, what are your pages? You need to incorporate Memphis Cool. Yes. Because everybody married somebody to say, that's a Memphis thing. Right. I never was big on the Memphis thing. The but thing. Memphis Cool, I, I like it. I, I like, like that. it. So. Good. And it's so nice that you have a friend from Australia who can recognize the Memphis School. He, he does. I'm flattered. He, I'm excited. I'm he, done. He's uh, he's down there under. Quit while I'm ahead. You know, uh, Australia is under lockdown. I know. I think for six more yeah. days. And they, yeah. they've got their, the Australian defense um, uh, force is, they divide that country up into districts. And they've got, they're patrolling all the districts. they got helicopters and stuff, making sure everybody stays in their houses. And somebody explained for the first time today uh, on Facebook the difference between – you tend to think Australia is a lot like the United States. I always thought so. I mean, the, the people are very similar to mm -hmm. us. You know, we were indentured servants and criminals. So were they. <laughs> who started it's very friendly. Very friendly. But it, it, they are a monarchy. Right. They're still part of the – English uh, – Right, Great uh, Britain. The English Empire. And uh, they uh, – they look to the uh, royal, uh, whoever they do have a prime minister, but that, that's a political person, and they still look at the the monarchy as they take build the highways, they take care of everything, and and when they say this is what we're going to do, there's there's nobody to appeal to. That's just the way it is. So like my parents, <laughs> there is no higher court. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mom and Dad said something. I'd go to the yeah, other that's one. It. Yeah. I try to. Uh, mother, mother would say. No, you're not going camping out this weekend with a bunch of guys that just got their driver's license. I go say, Dad, what about it? What'd your mother say? She was not for it. He goes, 
I'm not bucking that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going there. So he knew who the boss was. I like that. Good for him. Well, it, it, then occasionally I, I could talk one or the other one into, you know, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> that sounds so familiar. And yeah. Begging. It was not above begging at all. That was before you were Memphis Cool. That's when you were Texas I was uh, desperate. Just Texas. Uh, in fact, you'll appreciate this, having been in broadcasting. When I was at the University of Texas, I majored in radio, television, and film. And John, the Johnsons owned the CBS affiliate there, KTBC TV. And they had a radio station, KTBC Radio. And my roommate was this guy named Lee Majors. Not the Lee Majors, but I, I got a lot of girls to come to my apartment because my roommate Lee was Majors. Lee Majors. <laughs> <laughs> I would stop at nothing. <laughs> and so he got to drive around in a... In a um, and a SS 396. Let me. This is Brett Batterson with the Orpheum. I gotta take. Oh, okay. Take that call. Hey, Brett. Listen, I'm right in the middle of my show, but can I call you back after the show? Okay. Thank you, sir. We don't want to miss anything at the Orpheum. Well, no, the Orpheum is very important. Very important to the show, and and uh, to they're Memphis. they're just now cranking back yeah, up again, and. And they're having a reunion for all the people that have worked there over the years. Oh, really? Coming up in um, in September. Oh, that would be great. And I was a uh, director of development there for a while. So So you well, get to go to the party. I do. One of the best experiences I've ever had, because I never had a real, like an office job before. And the but they've remodeled the Orpheum now. But it used to have these old-timey offices with wood paneling and big kind of like picture windows. And... Uh, it was, uh, I would take my lunch every day, because uh, at that time we were living in in uh, Cordova, I think. So obviously I didn't go home for lunch. And um, I would sit in my office and eat my lunch and listen to, to Paul Harvey on the radio. Oh my <laughs> which I used to do in the oil field. Really? So, yeah, every day, <laughs> Paul Harvey, good day. And um, and then it was just, I'd go down when the, like cats would come and they'd do the load in and they'd have a sound check and I got to hear the girls sing Memories. I was the only one in the audience. That's very cool. Now, that's Memphis cool. That that's is Memphis. Orpheum cool. And uh, and it was just, uh, you know, a great experience. And uh, so it's always been near and dear to me. And then they, they advertised with the magazine, advertised with me. And so we've always had a really great relationship. And, and of course, and, Pat Halloran did oh. such a phenomenal job. Plus his tours when he would take tourists to New York to see the shows. I uh, know. Did you go with some of those? With no, him? I wish I had. What was really interesting, when I, because I had, uh, when the budget would come out every year, I'd have, I had the budget for the director of developments. Um, and I look, I said, look, I've got uh, $6,000 in travel expense. He goes, that's not yours. I said, no, it's right it's beside right here. director of development, $6,000. He goes, that's my travel money. I said, but it's, he said, that's, that's my, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I under, now I understand accounting. And uh, <laughs> I remember one time he asked me, he said, do you want to do the announcement, you know, that they play before shows? And, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Orpheum Theater. If you have a phone, please turn it off now. If you need hearing assistance, we have uh, devices for the hearing impaired. And then the, your, notice where you're at. So there's a whole little announcement. Right. So I said, that's great. Yeah, so I read it, and they played it one time. The next show, hi, this is Pat, Pat Howard. Howard. <laughs> what, why, what, did, what did they not like about your brilliant performance? It, Pat, just, he liked, he liked a, it. He's that a that very is. hands-on kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he was kind of the face of the Oregon. Oh, absolutely. I mean, every... You knew who he, Pat Ellerin was. He is the one that made that happen. Yeah. Uh, he, I, I did a video biography uh, for Charlie Burgess, for his family, mm -hmm. because they wanted him to tell his story in his own words. And I interviewed all these people, including Pat. And Charlie was extremely um, um, influential in getting the Orpheum brought back to life. And he was on the original board. And so when they were interviewing Pat about becoming uh, the head of the Orpheum, uh, he said that Charlie called him down at the rendezvous. <laughs> he, he said, Go to that giant said, oh, Look, Alan, don't screw this up. <laughs> you know, Charlie did. You? Well, I knew him, but not that well. No. Fortunately, I never heard that tone of voice. I, I saw him in action a couple of times with some sailors down there at the rendezvous. And, uh, it was short Don't work. mess with Charlie. You do not mess with the big bear. And, uh, 
But uh, Pat just did incredible things. He expanded it, and now there's the Pat Howard Helen, uh, Center, Center for Performing yeah, Arts. Yeah. And uh, but but Brett Batterson, who's now the president, came in. Totally different personality, but just doing a, a huge dynamic job. And he wears cowboy boots. I immediately we so hit you it off. So you liked him right away. He uh, worked, he's your guy. He is. He he worked for a theater in Midland, Texas, right next to Odessa, where I grew up. And once you spend time in Texas, it changes you forever, mm-hmm. for the better. Uh, obviously, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> So he used to live in Texas, yeah. and now he's taking the Orpheum to the next level. He is, and, and of course it's been shut down for almost a year. And so it, they've already started having some uh, events there, and but they crank up the Broadway season in September. Good. They got all, in fact, ZZ and Top is supposed to I, come. Yeah, I, I heard that on the news, and I think that concert is still on, well, even though Dusty Hill passed away. Yeah, which uh, was so sad. I mean, nobody uh, knew he was sick or anything, and uh, but... Uh, he, uh, Billy, I knew a lot better than Dusty, but they used to come here to record at Arden Studio, and they would come downtown to Sleep Out Louie's, my place downtown. Just regular guys with big old beards. With long beards. <laughs> I rode an elevator with a couple of them once. Did you? They were sort of easy to recognize. Yeah, you know. To who say the least. It's a very distinct look. You know? Yeah, and I couldn't tell which was which. I just knew I've got a couple of ZZ Tops in the elevator with me. Well, the, at the Peabody. Billy had at one time kind of reddish hair, oh, a reddish okay. beard. And Billy had, I just remember the older he got the last time I saw him was at the Live at the Garden. And Billy had a white beard and white hair, and his skin was really pink. He looked kind of like a rabbit. <laughs> okay. Big old, okay. big old rabbit. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, it's, but I, I, they're going to go on. I mean, they can get another bass player because yeah. the songs are what people want to hear. I mean, right. look at the look at the Glenn Miller band. Glenn Miller's been gone since World War II. Yeah. And they've, his band has toured the, the continuously since then. And God knows how well, many. Well, you get Leonard Skinner, and I can think of, yeah. All of them. Yeah. I mean, yeah, people, they, 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 they come and they go. And yeah. if the music's great and the rest of them are still alive, they got to eat. They got the Rolling Stones has had a change in bass players. They had Bill Wyman. And then it's, was it Ron Wood took, took Bill Wyman's place? But. One was with them for 20 years, and now they've gone on another 50 with yeah. changes in personnel. And they'll do the same thing when Mick's gone, you know. Yep. They've got to get somebody that can... <laughs> Walk like a chicken. <laughs> Walk like a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me tickled. <laughs> uh, let's talk about uh, your trip to uh, Paulette's. <laughs> I'll put that up. This is the entrance to Paulette's, which... It, when did it move to Harbor Town? Oh gosh, I don't know. Because I, they, we, everybody used to go to it at Overton. When it was Square. in Overton Square, right? Yeah. Um, and that's when George Falls owned it. I mean, he owned it from the beginning, right? Yes. And then at the same time, he owned the was it the French Quarter Inn, also in Overton Square. He did, and he also owned. There was a restaurant that is used to be where Alex uh, Grizzani had a restaurant in Germantown. Right across from the Germantown Commissary. It's now Southern Social. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was George Falls. He had a restaurant I didn't know there. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, now he's sort of combined those same elements in a way with Paulette's downtown at Harbor Town and is at the River Inn, which he owns on Harbor Town. So you've still got that kind of similar feel, except in this case, it's all in one building. So you've got the hotel and the restaurant. And, and but when it moved, oh, that's, don't ask me so many hard questions. I, I know it's been at least 10 years. Oh, gosh, Probably, longer than maybe that. Maybe 20. Longer, yeah. I, if I had to bet, which I won't, I would say 20 years. Uh, but the I remember before they moved, the little old lady that owned the house in between Bombay Bicycle Club and Paulette's, they had, they had the little pit, white picket fence. And remember, over the square was just crazy, and New Year's Eve was crazy. And remember, we do the New Year's well, Eve. Well, I was thinking about that um, because we used to stay at the French Quarter Inn sometimes. After we got off the air at one o'clock, we would go decompress at the hotel yep. till two or three or four. Dave Brown could stay up later than anybody. <laughs> that guy was a night owl. He was uh, with us this, this past weekend at Ron Olson's uh, induction to the Radio Hall of Fame in Murfreesboro. I saw the pictures. It looks like y'all had such a great time. It was it was fun. it's fun always going out of town with a bunch of Memphians someplace, you know, because we have our we're Memphis cool. Is of what course, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like to share the love. And we took the cool with us to Murfreesboro <laughs> and uh, had a great time. But he was walking in with his wife Margaret, and it, and I was coming out to go get the stuff out of the car. I said. Welcome to Embassy Suites, Mr. Brown. Can I get that luggage? He goes, 
It's in the car. <laughs> I ain't getting your luggage. Man. <laughs> Friendship only goes so far. So, but he he was. He's, he's Dave was right there. amazing. He's ageless. He and really is. He looks exactly the same, and I think he still drives a vet. Now he didn't he wasn't driving it on this trip, but I think he, that's his uh, probably, car. Probably, yeah. He always had a he loved his Corvette. Mm-hmm. And um, I always wanted a Harley, but every time I got ready to get one, something would break, like the furnace or the air conditioning. So that may be good. That's what that's Kathy never complained about. No, it, so you're not getting a. Nah. Yeah, yeah. Said, your bicycle, you don't even ride your bike. so why would I... And you can hurt yourself on a bicycle, oh, too. Oh, Joe Burns broke his collarbone. Yeah. Doing one and you, you definitely get hurt. Uh, oh, anyway, so back to Paulette. Yes. Uh, we have no idea how long it's been there, but we're going to guess 20 years. At least. Great river view and fabulous food. And I want to give a shout out, and I've mentioned this to you before, to George, who is our server. I, I, I was put, with I my put his picture good. up today, too. Yeah. He was great. He has five kids. Well, then you need to tip he, him Yeah, well. we did. Yeah, my friend Sherry move. and Nancy and I made There's sure. George. I, yeah. got, I just got his picture up. Good, good. He just could not have been nicer or more efficient. And then when we heard he had five children, yeah. the youngest being just a few months old, we thought absolutely tip big, especially after a pandemic. Yeah, we yeah. really want to show support to those folks. Well, I think most people are. And, and the fact that he came back, uh, I'm going to go back to your friends. There you are. And you're there with uh, Sherry Emerson mm -hmm. and Nancy Taylor. Right. And... Uh, how, how, they're your friends. How are you? How, God, the, we all have been friends for uh, 18, 19, almost 20 years now. We all used to work together at Grace St. Luke's Episcopal School. Sherry is still there. Nancy and I have retired, but Sherry is still plugging away. So, so you um, left her all on her own. We there. left her. We said, bye bye, we're out of here. Let's You're take on her your to own. Lunch. Do you have to be back yet? <laughs> yes, but fortunately, <laughs> she's been on summer hours. Oh, okay. This week, they had to go back to regular regular hours, but we were able to have a nice long lunch. And then after lunch, we went up to Miss 